Okay, so where are we? What's going on? Well, Green's Theorem takes some time to really get inside your head. I suggest going slowly and working in the context of examples. So let's do an example. Let's think back, back to the example that we started this off with, the integral of that one form field, x dy. Remember that guy? Registers change in the y direction, scales it by x. But now, instead of integrating over a rectangular path or a circular path, take any simple closed curve in the plane, let's call it gamma, and let's orient it in a counterclockwise direction. Then, what is the integral of x dy over this loop, gamma? Green's theorem says what you can do is fill in that loop with a two-dimensional domain, with d that has gamma as its boundary, and then integrate with respect to area what? What is the integrand? Green's theorem says you take the partial with respect to x of the component in front of the dy. That's x. Then you take the partial with respect to y of the component in front of the dx term. That's 0. We subtract that. doesn't do anything. In the end, what we get is the integral of 1 with respect to area. That is simply the area of this domain d. So we see this works not just for rectangles, not just for circles. This works for any region in the plane. And this is not the only one form that has that property. Consider the following. Consider minus y dx or 1 half x dy minus 1 half y dx. Both of these have that property, as you can check. Now, these are rather special sorts of one forms. Not all one forms have that property, and Green's theorem is good for more than just computing area. Let's consider some examples involving circulation and flux. Remember the two examples that we did in the previous chapter associated to the vector field f expressed as quantity minus y plus xy squared plus x cubed i plus quantity x plus x squared y plus y cubed j. And we want to compute circulation and flux along the radius r circle based at the origin. That's our gamma. Remember what that vector field looks like, how it spirals around and then goes out. Let's start with the circulation. If we integrate the work one form, quantity minus y plus xy squared plus x cubed dx, plus quantity x plus x squared y plus y cubed dy. Integrating that over gamma is, by Green's theorem, the same thing as integrating over the disk d that bounds that curve the following integrand. Take the partial with respect to x of the term in front of the y. That is x plus x squared y plus y cubed. Then subtract off the partial with respect to y of quantity minus y plus xy squared plus x cubed. Doing those partial derivatives gives us, for the first term, 1 plus 2xy. And then subtract off that second partial derivative, negative 1 plus 2xy. Those 2xy's cancel in the end you get the area over this disk d of 2 with respect to area. That's twice the area. That's 2 pi r squared. Now, for the flux, it's only a little bit harder. We have to integrate the flux one form. That's minus quantity x plus x squared y plus y cubed dx plus minus y plus xy squared plus x cubed dy. By Green's theorem, that's the double integral over d of the partial with respect to x of the term in front of the dy plus the partial with respect to y of quantity x plus x squared y plus y cubed. Now, be careful with your plus and minus signs when you're working with this flux one form. In the end, after you do those partial derivatives, you'll see that you get the integral of 4 times quantity x squared plus y squared. This clearly calls for polar coordinates. What are you going to get there? You're going to get a double integral as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. r goes from 0 to r of 4r squared times the area element r dr d theta. With a little bit of integration, you can show that this is going to give you 2 pi r to the fourth. The same answer we got before. And that was pretty easy, thanks to Green's theorem.